Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, depending on good afternoon and good morning, depending on where you are coming from. This is just a quick sustain RT update for the month. I'm gonna go through this in a few minutes and please know that most of this information is also on our webpage. So we have a lot of really active project teams and they are open for membership. So if any of this tickles your fancy, please get in touch with the person on the website and ask about joining these efforts. We have our environmental scan where you can enter any kind of sustainability project. We're building a kind of database which we hope to make public and shareable soon. Around our ALA governance team, uh, Rebecca Smith Aldrich was the main driver behind a resolution that passed in June around infusing ALA and all that we do with sustainability efforts and those discussions are ongoing with the executive board. We have a membership drive. We're trying to reach 300 members by the end of 2016, so please invite colleagues to join. And we have our next webinar coming up in May. Rachel Shea is a librarian at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts. She's going to be talking about librarians as community makers and also watch for our proposal if you would like to do a lightning round in Orlando. We have elections coming up in mid-March. We have a full slate, very exciting to see who's going to come on board next as some of the leaders for Sustain RT, although we're all leading this together. And then finally, if you just take a glance down all that's happening at annual, we have our open board meeting, lightning rounds, uh, Rebecca Smith, Aldrich, and Matthew Bowlerman, who are both on our board, they're going to do a workshop called Sustainable Thinking. We have a team of librarians coming from Aruba. And finally, we're doing a fun meeting with the Social Responsibilities Roundtable, otherwise known as CERT. We're going to have a really nice hors d'oeuvre session and a quick business meeting. So I hope to see a lot of you in Orlando. And with that, I am going to pass this on to Michael. Okay, Michael, are you ready? I am ready. Can people hear? I'm assuming people can hear me. Um, I've just also uh, turned on my video camera just for the beginning, just to say hello to everyone and, and welcome everyone. I'm, I'm going to uh, beam myself out in a moment, but I thought it would be nice for me to be something more than just a disembodied voice uh, talking to you from in this case today from Sacramento, California, which is my home. Um, so thanks to everyone for being here. I, I think, um, and thanks for the work that you do because I think it's holding a space within uh, the library world for a conversation about sustainability is really important work. And as someone who thinks about sustainability a lot, I, I guess I have a bias, but um, I just think it's urgently important in today's world on all sorts of levels. So, so thanks not only for being here, but for the work that you're doing. So I'm going to jump in and, and uh, talk a little bit fast to try to keep uh, people from falling asleep and get through a lot of material before turning it over to Sally, who's our second presenter. Uh, first off, just a little bit of information about Chelsea Green Publishing, the company that I represent. We're uh, based in Vermont. We're a mission-driven independent publisher and distributor of books on the politics and practice of sustainability. Um, our books are all printed in North America on recycled paper. Uh, we celebrated our 30th anniversary in 2014 and became employee-owned in 2012. And categories include sustainable agriculture, local food, uh, nature and environment, new economy, systems thinking, progressive politics. A quick plug to come and visit us if you happen to be at, the, at PLA, the Public Library Association Conference in April in Denver. Uh, we'll be on the 1500, 1550 is our booth number. Come say hello. I won't actually be there, but some other people from the company will. Um, what makes us different from other publishers? Um, we're a mission-driven publisher. We, re we publish books that, that we believe in. And um, I'm a little bit toward the fanatical end of the spectrum, but if anyone out there happens to need firsthand information, information on worm composting, electric cars, solar ovens, sheet mulching, permaculture design, or a great 30-second tutorial on how to make killer sauerkraut, please contact me directly after the, uh, after the webinar. We do a lot of direct kind of marketing and communication with organizations all over the country who promote sustainability. And we consider these organizations our partners in an ongoing conversation. 
They provide us with blurbs and reviews, publicity. They host events for our authors, and occasionally they even become our authors. And we provide them with content for blogs, newsletters, and websites, authors for community events, help with media and social media promotion for their events and for their, their organizations, and, and fundraising revenue through our books. So we are in touch with a lot of groups that are do, doing um, on-the-ground work on sustainability at the neighborhood level or at the national level. Um, what can we offer libraries? Other than the fact that we'd love to see our books in your collections, we can offer a valuable partner for sustainability programming. And, I, and that's really my focus today. I don't think that libraries necessarily instinctively think of publishers as significant partners on events. Um, but we can do books. You know, we have, we have great authors. Uh, we have that kind of shared community network and co-promotion. And when I talk about community network, I talk a little bit about it, but you, you, know, you may be doing, say, an event, a gardening event or a, a sustainability event. You might have a great relationship with a local garden club, but a publisher like us that works in the niche um, might have additional contacts that would be useful to you. Maybe it's a local blogger with a big following. Maybe it's an urban farm store that sells books on sustainable agriculture, or maybe it's a person at the local daily or weekly paper who writes a book column or an environmental report. Any of those people could help kind of expand your audience for a sustainability-oriented event. And I just want to share um, a few examples of books and events, books that might be useful in sustainability-oriented programming and some events that have, have happened or are happening around these events. Um, the first one is a book on climate change. Uh, climate change is the issue of our time. It, it's quickly, um, quickly becoming one of our central kind of cultural metaphors. And this book was just named one of Choice's Outstanding Academic Titles for 2015 and would really be an excellent book for a climate change discussion group. It looks at the psychology of global warming, at our individual relationships, and kind of the cognitive dissonance around this issue of climate change between you know, what we know to be true about it and, and how we live our lives. Um, if an organization like the Citizens Climate Lobby or 350.org has a chapter in your town, they would be a natural partner. And we've worked with both those organizations around this book. And we could beam in the author for an event from his native Norway, which would be more carbon friendly than throwing him on an airplane, I guess. Um, another kind of book club possibility, this Eco Fable from the 1950s by French novelist Jean Giono was the second book that Chelsea Green ever published in our inaugural year of 1984. And right now here in my hometown of Sacramento, uh, there's a local nonprofit called Neighborwoods, which just received funding to plant a thousand fruit trees, a thousand shade trees, and a thousand carbon sequestering trees in three kind of underserved uh, zip codes in Southeast Sacramento. And we're working on doing some book clubs around this book to help call attention to this project and, and build it some, some deeper roots, so to speak, in the community. Um, this book is more aimed at university libraries and kind of serious scientific and ag conferences. But I wanted to mention it because it ships this month. And I think it may be the most important book we've ever published. Um, it is a $75 hardcover. It's a global toolkit on carbon farming methods to be used worldwide to sequester carbon and transform industrial agriculture. And it's been getting some great advanced buzz from the international development community, especially since the author was in Paris for the climate talks at the end of last year and had some advanced copies with him. Um, this was the new title that we promoted heavily at ALA last year. Any of you there might have picked up a copy. I, I was thinking it would be a great book for library-based events. Permaculture is a design methodology for sustainable living, and this is a great book for considering how people can apply permaculture principles to urban and suburban living in kind of a big picture way, not just to their gardens and, and to homesteads. It would be a great discussion book and is really relevant to work that's being done by a number of nonprofits right now on the, in terms of building community scale, community resilience. Uh, back in 2008, we published um, the U.S. edition of the Transition Handbook. And some of you may have heard of the Transition Movement or the Transition Towns Movement, which was started in the U.K. by permaculturist Rob Hopkins. And there are now networks in hundreds of U.S. towns and cities. And they would be great 
partners in sustainability programming. The transition movement is all about bringing people together to figure out how to respond kind of as a community, creatively, even joyfully to the challenges of climate change and trying to reduce our carbon footprint. And coincidentally, um, this is a flyer that has just gone out, again, in Sacramento, where I live. Um, it's an event where Transition U.S., the kind of uh, governing body or umbrella group for the transition initiatives in the U.S., and 350 Sacramento are collaborating on a neighborhood scale project to save money by reducing consumption and waste. And you'll notice that the meeting is taking place in the local library. Uh, great little kind of neighborhood community building event on looking at how can we as communities reduce our carbon footprint. And there's a great, um, great place for libraries in this kind of conversation. And I, and I think that's, that is an important takeaway, I think, that the focal point for what seems to be really the most vital and, and juicy and important work of building sustainability is happening at the community and neighborhood scale. There are more groups than ever out there doing this work, and I think that's a great opportunity for libraries. Um, a few other just kind of subjects that lend themselves to activity-based events with community businesses or nonprofits as partners. Beekeeping, <coughs> excuse my voice, uh, small-scale or backyard chickens, um, mushroom growing. And I would guess that in many of your communities, there are local organizations or businesses that, would, that have an interest in these kind of activities and that would help promote events. And we've done some of those kinds of events. Last summer, we published a book on organic kind of sustainable hop growing. And one of the first events our authors did was a talk at their local library in New York State followed by a tour out to the, uh, to the hop fields to see uh, beer on the hoof, I guess, those big hop plants growing behind the people standing there. Um, and that brings us to you know, food and food preservation events. And food is really a great entry point into thinking about sustainability. Um, I call kind of healthy homegrown food a gateway drug to biophilia. It's, it's the way a lot of people have come to connect with the importance of the natural world and with, with really loving in a, in a very immediate way the natural world. And, and it's true that so many of our books have something to do with food. The Art of Fermentation there is our best-selling book of all time, uh, New York Times bestseller, James Beard winner, and the author has done a number of great events at libraries, selling out um, a, a number of events at libraries since that book came out in 2012. And some of the best community partnerships are with right now that are to be had out there, I think, are with organizations working on better access to affordable, healthy food. There's money uh, from the public health sector, and there's some really interesting and, and innovative partnerships forming between health and sustainability organizations. This is a terrible example for a publisher because it has nothing whatsoever to do with books, but this is from last month at my little uh, neighborhood local library where, where I was 50 volunteers with an organization called Harvest Sacramento that provided on a Saturday morning more than a half ton of oranges, lemons, and grapefruit. I realize that you can't do this just anywhere, um, but in Sacramento, there's all this unused surplus fruit from people's backyards, and this was gleaned and made available to anyone who happened to stop by the public library on that particular Saturday. And there were community partners for this event, including the food bank and a local organic farm. AmeriCorps sent people out. Uh, and of course, Harvest Sacramento, the sponsoring organization, just a really great event. Um, this is a book that I think would be great uh, to partner with a local food access organization. They could help by funding some basic supplies. It shows a nearly uh, foolproof, low-cost, low-tech way to grow fresh salad greens in a week with no lights and even no direct sun, and you don't have to live in California, I promise. The author lives in Vermont, actually, and does this all winter long. And this is a poster for an event um, with, that's coming up this month with our gardening author, Carol Deppie, who's written three gardening books with us. The, the poster flyer doesn't even mention her books, but um, it's a great event in that it's, it, there's a great local alliance between the local food alliance, uh, the garden club, master gardeners. It all happens at the library. It's a seed swap. People get to come and and, and share seeds, which, which gets uh, garden, garden types really excited. Um, and speaking of seeds, there's, of course, the phenomenon of seed libraries, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with and was seemed to be all anyone wanted to talk about, at least with me, two years ago at PLA 
in Indianapolis. Um, this book, Janice Ray's book, The Seed Underground, is an inspirational narrative look at the deeper significance of seeds and, and the act of saving them. Great book to use in rallying a community to support a new seed library. And in 2013, uh, Janice's book was selected for a list of recommended resources for a program that I hadn't heard of at the time of the California State Library called the Book to Action Program, which uh, Sally is going to tell you about in, in less than a minute. Um, that I was, I loved the program because it fit so neatly with Chelsea Green's view of books as tools toward a greater outcome. And I was really thrilled when, when Sally, who helped to initiate the program, picked the Seed Underground for, for her event that spring. Um, books were read, sold through the local bookstore. People read the book and helped launch a new seed library in partnership with a community gardening organization. Uh, for environmental reasons, the author, Janice, does not fly on airplanes, and she lives on the opposite coast from the Bay Area where Sally's based. Um, so Sally's library Skyped her in to speak with the people who'd read her book, and you'll, you'll see that on the, at the top of the flyer there. But it was a great event and a nice example of how books can really be put to use in the community, which I think is very exciting. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this presentation over to Sally now to share a little bit more information with you about, specifically about the Book to Action program and her experience with it. Um, so, Sally, I'm going to pass you the ball, and thanks very much. Hi, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you just fine, Sally. Thanks. Great. Okay. Um, well, that was a, a wonderful introduction, um, a segue. Um, I'm really glad to have been ha had the opportunity to work with uh, Chelsea Green. And now I'm going to talk about our Book to Action program. Uh, again, I'm just uh, going to turn the keep the camera on for a second just to say hi. I'm calling from Hayward, California. And now I'll just launch into my uh, presentation because I'm going to try to cover a lot of ground. Um, and I may go a little fast, but I, I really just want to uh, give you an overview of the program and some uh, further examples of sustainability-related projects that we've done and also that we know of other libraries uh, in California. So basically, Book to Action is similar to a one community, one book program that many of you have probably um, either sponsored or participated in, where we engage in a, a common a reading of a common book. We call, In this case, uh, if we can, we invite the author, either by Skype or in person. and um, and then the ACT part of it is about collaborating with uh, local organizations that are doing related work and then inviting the community to get involved in a, a civic engagement project. Uh, it wasn't, I wish I could claim that it was my idea, but actually it was Multnomah County Library uh, that launched Book to Action in November of 2008. And they had really great experience. And then I was a fellow at the uh, uh, IMLS Western Regional uh, Program for Transforming Life After 50, after 50 in 2010. And that's how I learned about it. And I thought it was such a great idea that I applied for funding through the California State Library. And uh, California State Library has been in, in promoting civic engagement in a variety of ways. And so we've been really lucky to um, benefit from their leadership. And when I shared the success of our programs in Hayward, uh, they were very uh, quick to um, follow and get details. And then uh, begin in 2012, they started offering annual $3,000 grants to up to 10 libraries. Um, they sponsored the publication of the Book to Action Toolkit which I encourage you to take a look at. It has a lot of, um, it's available for free to anyone, and it has a lot of really great uh, resources. Currently, the program is being administered by the California Center for the Book uh, on behalf of the State Library. They, they did surveys, and uh, when they did their first uh, grant, projects and uh, just had phenomenal response from participants throughout all of the libraries implementing Book to Action. And you can see here, I won't go in detail, but um, overwhelmingly uh, program participants, 
confirmed that they valued the opportunity to learn about a current topic and found it meaningful to actively address a service need in their communities. And uh, the California State Library and, and myself were really also impressed with uh, other libraries who in 2012 took this on. Um, this is a picture of Peggy Yost from Solano County Library who described her Book to Action program is one of the most meaningful highlights of her career. And you can see that uh, just by the map that so many libraries, now over 40 libraries, um, and I think now uh, an additional 10 will be implementing programs in this year, at least 10. Because there are many libraries like myself uh, are we got funding maybe for one or two rounds, but now have found other ways to um, to implement the program uh, through partnerships and grants locally. So just want to describe this is kind of where we are on the map. We're we're south of of Sacramento, um, also a little bit south of of Oakland, and considered the East Bay. Hayward is a mostly working class urban city with a population of about. 150,000 people. It's considered one of the most diverse uh, cities in the state of California with large immigrant populations. About 40% of the city's population is Latino, including many immigrants from Mexico. Its school district is chronically underperforming. We have a small library system with a main library and one branch. So Hayward is a community facing many challenges. One reason why Book to Action has filled a really positive fu function of bringing people together to work on common causes. So we've mentioned that in 2011, uh, we launched uh, here in Hayward the Book to Action program um, with Novella Carpenter's really fabulous book, Farm City, The Education of an Urban Farmer. It's one of my all-time favorite books. If you haven't read it, read it I really recommend uh, that you do. She's a great um, speaker as well, uh, funny and informative, and she entertained a standing room only audience at a special event that we held. In terms of the action portion, we partnered with several local organizations and collaborated with a local middle school to participate in a community garden work day. And if you go to the uh, California Library Toolkit, um, Book to Action Toolkit, you'll be able to see a short video that we produced that describes the story. So just to highlight, this is a common sentiment, I can make a difference. This is repeatedly stated by volunteers uh, such as Deb here, pictured locally at our um, Community Garden Work Day in 2011. Just that notion of, you know, having an impact um, individually and collectively with others in the community. We continued the program in 2012, um, and these are the kinds of descriptions that participants had. Enlightening, empowering, encouraging, invaluable, enriching, powerful. So it just has spurred us to continue to organize um, projects. As Michael mentioned, in 2013, we launched a seed lending library, and we did choose uh, the seed underground, and you can see uh, in the photo on the right hand with a big red arrow pointing, we did have, <laughs> we were addressing the screen, but this shows um, Janice on the computer screen, and we had a really lively discussion with her. It's not only a way to uh, reduce your carbon footprint, but if you uh, also, it's if you can't, don't have a lot of money to offer a, an author who's in another state or in another country, it's a great way to connect with the author. Um, and other libraries have also since uh, uh, offered that, um, selected that book to highlight it as a really extremely engaging read. And I think that's just something that I want to emphasize, that finding a book that, for us, um, is accessible to a, a wide variety of uh, community members, uh, not just uh, in academic circles, uh, is really important. So. Choose your, your book carefully, make sure you've read it, and, and feel like it's immediately engaging and accessible. If you are, I just thought I'd make a plug. Um, if you are interested in learning more about how to start and run a seed, lend, seed lending library, um, I'm going to be presenting a webinar 
uh, to the Rusa community uh, with another uh, seed librarian um, just at the end of this month on February 29th, and you can go to the uh, ALA Rusa website and find out more about that. Okay, so we've, as I mentioned, this is now just briefly indicating that we continue to sponsor at least one, sometimes two, book to action programs every year. In 2013, in the fall, we partnered um, with local organizations and read Tattoos on the Heart by Gregory Boyle, a Jesuit priest in Los Angeles. And we did programs relating to um, ending hun hunger and homelessness locally. In 2014, uh, we coupled our, prog our program with World Book Night, and we selected Cheryl Strade's uh, very engaging uh, memoir, Wild. I'm sure many of you have read it. And we organized uh, volunteers to serve as weekend weed warriors at a beloved park, the Hayward Regional Shoreline. And volunteers removed non-native invasive plants and picked up trash. In 2015, we had a significant turning point with a new collaboration with Cal State University East Bay, which is located here in Hayward. And we've developed a really productive partnership with their Center for Community Engagement and another department, Leadership Employee Enrichment Program. They have used their own funds to purchase books to distribute for free to staff, students, and also community members. And they've also covered uh, other program costs. And it, the programs have really helped us to bridge the town and the gown. And we're really uh, just thrilled about this collaboration. And I would encourage you uh, to investigate your local centers for community engagements on campuses in your communities. If you haven't or aren't already aware of the work that they do, it could be a very productive partnership. And so we're working now on planning the Future of Food Book to Action program for this spring. We've selected The Lentil Underground by Liz Carlisle, Renegade Farmers and the Future of Food in America. We're, um, uh, Liz Carlisle is a protege of Michael Pollan and a research fellow nearby at UC Berkeley. We'll be promoting the Plate of the Union, an educational initiative of the Union of Concerned Scientists and the event coincides with the United Nations International Year of the Pulses, highlighting lentils and other pulse crops as environmentally sustainable and extremely rich sources of protein. Our keynote event will take place on April 21st with an expert panel of speakers, including the author, and also Ricardo Salvador, an expert in sustainable agricultural practices and a senior scientist and director of the Union of Concerned Scientists Food and Environment Program. We'll have cooking demonstrations and offer samples of delicious, nutritious recipes highlighting sustainable food sources. So like Michael said, I think food uh, is, is a gate, great gateway, as she very aptly put. And in connection to that, we'll also offer several screenings of a really great film that was produced last year by John Legend called Can You Dig This? Highlighting the story of urban farmers in South Central Los Angeles and shedding light on community gardens, seed saving, food deserts, and related health issues and restorative, ish, restorative justice. And we'll be providing students, staff, and community members uh, hands-on volunteer experience at Feral Heart Farm, whose mission is to serve the people we care about and provide accessible food to the urban communities we live in, while also stewarding our little slice of land. This is uh, an organic farm uh, in nearby Sunol. It's privately operated, but it's offered on land that is overseen by the Sustainable Agriculture Education Project in Berkeley, known as SAGE. And uh, Feral Heart Farm is also working with East Bay Local Seeds, a network of seed libraries to grow, harvest, and share seeds for free regionally. Okay, so I'm, I'm probably running, yeah, so we need to end, but I have additional examples. Um, I did really want to highlight the work that we've done, um, but uh, you can contact me. I can give you access to our uh, uh, this presentation, and please go to the, the Book to Action uh, website, take a look at the toolkit, and um, you'll find lots of examples of worthwhile projects and books. Okay, so I guess this is the Q&A. 
Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but what I've posted in the chat is for anybody to ask questions here. So on your way out the door, put your questions in. This worked well in the past. We'll get Sally and Michael to send us answers, and we'll post it with the recording of this wonderful webinar. This was so informative. Thank you so much, Sally and Michael. You bet. So please stay Thank on you. if you can, everybody, and send your questions in. Um, we're going to close the, the floor officially, but we'll get back to you with answers and share the recording with people. I know a lot of people that registered and either couldn't make it or just wanted access to the recording, and you can share this freely. And let's spread the good word. I, I already have a few ideas of books and authors I'd like to see come to my community. So thank you so much. Should we, um, do, do we want to answer questions now that we have been posed? Beth, what do you think? Should we wrap up or just do it via chat and, and follow up later? Um, I'd say if uh, if we want to answer one or two quick questions, we don't want to keep people over too far because we like to kind of stick with the time. Um, and we want to make sure whatever questions we answer, we can then send out via email. But if there's one or two that we can answer real quick, maybe in the next two minutes. Okay. I'm doing the chat moderating. So there was a question from Jody Shaw. Sally, how did you get the California State Library Association involved um, starting their grant program? Well, actually, it was, it's, it's not the association. It's actually the California State Library. And they were the critical sponsor of that fellowship program that I mentioned, uh, Transforming Life After 50 in 2010. So I was a fellow of that program. And so they really followed um, our, our projects. And, and since they had already identified the Book to Action program model as a worthwhile way to engage uh, boomers and uh, intergenerational um, community members. Uh, they were very pleased to see it implemented, and they just took an immediate interest and got behind and felt like it would be a worthwhile program to offer small grants to other libraries. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. And a question from Michael from Lindsay Marlowe. Do, are there plans to have Chelsea Green titles specifically aimed at social justice and equity issues? That's a really good question and something we actually uh, discussed at, a, at our recent staff meeting, because we, we don't have a lot of great titles on social justice. There are a couple other publishers that focus on that niche specifically. Um, the one book, The Carbon Farming Solution, that I shared information on, which is the big kind of book with really global scale book on, on carbon farming, has a very strong kind of global climate justice component to it. Um, Eric, is, the author, is passionate about that, and uh, he discusses it a lot in that book. And we have some other books that, that cover it, but not as much that focuses on, on it as I would like to. So it's some, it is something we're definitely talking about. Thank you, Michael. And one last quick one uh, also for Sally about any book to action programs in rural areas where there's perhaps a more sparse selection of community groups to partner with. Any experience hearing about that? You know, um, I think I think there are, there's quite a wide range of, of libraries, and I would actually refer uh, somebody who wanted details to Mary Menzel from the California Center for the Book, who's administering the program and has a um, more a better overview of libraries um, throughout the state and what what the projects they've done and and their demographics. Okay, great, Lindsay, I, you were there, so I. It looks like you heard that. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. We're going to wrap up now and see you in May. We'll announce soon the next webinar coming with Rachel Shea. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Awesome. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Beth and everybody.